Hey guys, I wanted to come on here today and talk a little bit about um, judgment. So I know that being on the Luciferian path, um, judgment is a very big fear for a lot of people. A lot of people don't even acknowledge that they're Luciferian because a lot of um, a lot of the general public will associate them with um, several misconceptions and several rumors that are made about Luciferians. Um, and, and they don't want to be associated with that. Um, my entire, um, my entire career, my entire life is, uh, devoted to Luciferianism and, uh, is to devoted, is devoted to teaching the true nature of Luciferianism. Um, <clears throat> I, it, it is my in best interest to speak to all of you about common fears, um, uh, give help, give knowledge uh, about the path. And, uh, and, and that's, that's my entire goal is, is to just enlighten people, uh, to this path and the powers of magic, the powers of witchcraft and the powers of Lucifer and, uh, and to shed a lot of the stigma that is behind, uh, being a Luciferian. So, <clears throat> While living my truth and being on this path, I've of course encountered a lot of trolls, and um, you know trolls will go and take um, first, you know, first glance information and run with it. And um, one of the things that one of the things that um, people will notice about me is that my mother is Christian. Now, granted, she's not always been, but uh, she is now, and that and that is a fact. Um, uh, my father is not, and, um, uh, my father's side, you know, in general, not, and, um, my father's side is not up for discussion, for discussion, um, and I ask for privacy, uh, beyond what I share. Um, I, I tend to be a very private person and I, you know, I, I want to be as transparent as possible, but, um, I, I, I need, uh, my privacy respected. So, um. But I will talk about this issue that people bring up uh, continuously about um, my uh, my mother being Christian. Now, me and my um, mother get along for the most part. Uh, religion is not something that we discuss. Um, and uh, it's obviously a very sore spot between us. But um, she is the only one of that side of my family that I keep in contact with at all. Uh, you know, she's seen the abilities and the power of that side. And, you know, she has, you know, that at least that respect for it to just drop the subject and, um, to, you know, we maintain our relationship, uh, and, and that's fine. Uh, you know, at least to a certain degree. Um, the other, the rest of, uh, that portion of my family, at least is, is, uh, Christian. And I have always, um, you know, I have always, since being very young, been a black sheep. You know, I've always been different. And, um, I've always, you know, if asked, I'm sure, you know, any of them would be like, oh, you know, we didn't treat her bad. And the truth is, yes. Um, I have always been ostracized and treated different from that side of the family. And, um, again, that's not something that I want to delve into. I, I, you know, would appreciate privacy. I'm trying to be as transparent as possible. Um, and, but, um, my experience with that side of the family has been awful. And, um, from a very early age, like I said, I was always a black sheep and, uh, you know, for several factors that were out of my control. Anyway, um, uh, as I said, my, uh, you know, my mother wasn't always, at least my experience with her wasn't always Christian and, um, and a lot of people will say, oh, well, she's only involved in magic in 2017. No, that's false. Um, that's when my Luciferian pact was made, was in 2017. Um, and that's when I came back to magic. I, I, um, had, you know, gone off to college and, um, I had, you know, found my own way and I had explored, um, my different abilities and talents, uh, you know, in depth. And I was uh, definitely formally trained <laughs> and, um, yeah, I definitely know what I'm doing in magic. So, you know, there's a lot of trolls that will say, oh, well, she only started in 2017. That's not true. Um, that's just when I came back. 
Um, I did, I did suffer in college a little personal tragedy that brought me back home. And it was during that time where I, I was young and impressionable and, and kept on hearing, oh, you need to go to Jesus. Oh, you need to worship God and all this. And even though it like made me sick to my stomach, um, I did make an effort. (sighs) I had, um, uh, I, I, I made a very, very strong effort, um, in that field, you know, to go to church and to become a part of it. And I guess I was looking for the sense of belonging that I had never really had before. Uh, like I said, I had grown up, um, very much ostracized, uh, unfortunately by my own family on that side. And, um, I never felt included. I never felt like one of them. And I always felt different because I was, and, uh, and that's okay. Um, Anyway, but I was young and right out of college and very impressionable. And I felt like, you know, and I was at a very vulnerable part of my life. And I was like, well, now I'm going to give this a try. And I did. And I gave it a very hard try. Um, and for whatever reason, instead of realizing that I was going through a dark night of the soul at the time, I I thought that maybe I was being forsaken. Um in a way. And so uh, I was like, all right, I'll give this a try. And I did. And I lived for, um, for, for several years, I lived the life that was expected of me, um, from that side, at least, (laughs) and to live. And I, you know, married the person that I, I felt that they would approve of. And, um, I, and, and there's nothing bad. I have nothing bad to say about him. Um, and, and that's, again, I appreciate my privacy being respected. Um, and I, I just, I like, I had a little business in town and, and I, and I built like a little empire and I even went as far as, um, teaching classes. I taught classes in a church of Christ church and it was, it was, it was amazing. Like I, I taught, you know, classes, at least from a historical point of view and, uh, from what I knew, uh, I I knew the Luciferian version, and um, it worked pretty well in church setting too, and um, I I taught I taught a college class, and then I taught a um, I ended up teaching a, a little kids you know class, and my college class uh, had grew had grew really fast, and um, because it was mainly it was more of a history lesson than anything, and. Um, the whole time I felt like, I felt like I was absolutely just lying to myself and lying to these people, uh, as far as the path they should follow. But at least I was like historically talking in, you know, in, in context and I was historically, you know, speaking fact, um, and the class group. So like, um, at the time when I started, it was hard to just get a college student even in a church and it grew to like 30 to 40 people. It was really, really, really big at one point. And, I remember, uh, and again, like this was all at a very young age where I was just trying to be accepted and I was trying to fit into a mold that I thought would, um, would gain me like favor or love or acceptance for my family, or at least on one side. (laughs) And, um, and it was bullshit. (laughs) Uh, and, uh, anyway, I, I remember that ending, um, I had that ending because in this awful meeting where there was these, uh, it, that class became a problem. Like it was, it was, it grew so big and it was so great. And these people like had passion and, and they were excited because the lessons were interesting. Um, because I knew so much about the history and, uh, and then suddenly like the males in the church had an issue with it. And, uh, we were getting more people showing up on a Wednesday night college class than they would have the adults showing up in the Wednesday night college class. And I remember the college class being taken away from me. And, uh, and the reason was, uh, there's a verse in Timothy that, you know, talks about women being silent in the church. And I remember being a part of this meeting where these two, like, I guess they were deacons, uh, were going at it, completely going at it. Because one was in favor of me keeping the class and the other one was not. And then they came to the agreement that uh, I could teach the class, but only as long as like a male was in the room. Because God forbid a woman teach, a, teach by the Bible. 
Anyway, um, it was absolute utter bullshit. And um, <laughs> anyway, so we did that for a minute. And then it was just taken away entirely because, again, it grew just so big. And um, and they were like, okay, well, you know, this isn't going to happen. And, and I, I don't know because I, cause I didn't have a penis. And then, anyway, and they took away the class. And so it was like presented to me to teach children. And, and I, and I did, and I, of course, you know, I was just, again, at the time trying to be accepted, trying to live the life that was like, um, expected of me. And at least on that side again, and, um, the whole time I'll be very honest. I felt very sick to my stomach. I did not feel like I was living my truth and it was very stressful on me, um, personally, and you know mentally and it just in my soul it it never felt right and it, I never felt at peace um teaching those classes even though they were very popular um it was they're popular because they were interesting <laughs> um and I, I never felt totally right within my soul <sighs> anyway um so I taught the children's class and the kids loved it and you know and whatnot uh but you know and we'll talk about the later uh later on We'll talk, we'll discuss the, um, the, uh, why I feel like, oh, like there's child abuse in the church, but I remember looking at the curriculum and whatnot for the children's classes and being just disgusted with it. And there was this like vacation Bible school and the topics were kind of intense stories like, you know, Daniel in the lion's den and all this stuff where it was just like very, very scary. And, and it was very, um, Everything was like, you know, teaching these kids, you know, to and up to absolutely fear Lucifer and, you know, it ingrained in their minds that he was bad and that he was um, against them and he was trying to hurt them. And I knew the whole time this is bullshit and it was just so uncomfortable. And, and it got to this boiling point eventually in my whole life where I felt like everything was an absolute just fucking sham. I felt so uncomfortable. I was so upset and everything ended up falling apart. It fell apart in a very big way. Um, I, my, uh, you know, uh, of course, my, you know, my marriage dissolved and whatnot. And again, I, I don't want that pride into. That's not um, either one of our faults. I, I believe that, you know, I, I believe that when you are not living your truth and you are not with your soulmate, that um, it's very hard for anything to grow. So, you know, that's not... You know, there's no ill will there, but, um, you know, that's solved. And then Hurricane Harvey hit and, um, I, I, I remember I lost, I lost my, my, uh, business and home in like one fell swoop. And it was an absolute just tragedy. Everything kept going wrong. And that's one thing that I did notice is that while I was following the Christian path, everything that I would try to build would just come tumbling down. Um, the protection wasn't there. I never felt at home. I was never, I never was accepted. And, um, you know, I'm sure that that side of the family is just like, kind of like just rolling <laughs> beside themselves as they watch this. But honestly, like, fuck y'all. Um, y'all were terrible to me. And, you know, I'm just, it, you know, if it were anyone were to like go and like speak against it, I would just tell more and more of stories and more and more of my truth. Um, I was always treated bad by that side, no matter what I did, no matter if I taught classes, no matter if I joined the church, no matter, um, I just saw a very ugly side of Christianity, extremely ugly. It was so toxic and so, um, unloving and, and so cold and, and awful. And, and, and I remember, um, I remember being a part of, uh, or sitting down uh, at listening to these women at different luncheons and different, like they would play this game called nerds or whatever, when you know, they play these card games and, and I had taken part in at least a few cause you know, they were hosted at, um, my mother's house and, and I would hear these women talk and it was trash. It was just, just fucking trash. It was insane. You know, they would, they would all be gossiping about somebody in the church or some female in the church. There was one poor female, Oh, bless her. It, it, 
I don't know where she is now, but she was like, she was divorced and she had a child or two and, oh, she it was like, she was always the topic of conversation and they would just talk so much shit about her. And, um, and then when somebody would leave the table, everybody would talk about the person who left the, left the table. It was, it was outrageous. They would talk shit about their children. They would talk shit about everyone. And my experience around these people, my experience around the deacons, around the preacher at the time, um, around all of them was so negative and nasty and, and self-righteous and racist. <laughs> and it was absolutely outrageous. And I will never go back. There is not a chance in hell. Um, I have been, I, I've been to the church seminars. I've been to the college little groups. I've been to the super churches where they, you know, they scam you and they're like, oh, well, you know, they, they have all the lights and the sounds and the, and the rock bands up front. And they, they try to like suck you in and that and suck you into that, um, that whole ambiance. And, and it is overwhelming. Um, it's, it's kind of like the same feeling I got at a Skrillex concert when you're, all your senses are overloaded. Um, and so people think that they're feeling God, but really they're just feeling a really like cool concert and lighting and everyone's raising their hands and crying and uh, crying for no fucking reason. And, and children are being taught from, from, you know, two and up that, you know, that they're full of sin and inherently evil and, and that they should feel guilty about God killing his own son, which he should have never fucking done. It was absolutely disgusting. What kind of parent fucking kills their child for anyone? That is absolutely ridiculous because of bad management, because you made, because, because God made rules that were, that were at people found loopholes in. Like, so you killed your kid? What kind of fucking sense does that make? It doesn't make any sense. These stories that, and I'm almost angry at the time that I lost trying to fit in. The stories that I was having to teach were just bullshit because I knew the other side and I, and I knew that Lucifer wasn't bad and I knew that Lucifer didn't want anybody to be hurt and I, I knew it was a complete lie. It was a lie. It was an absolute fucking lie. And everyone believes it. And everybody, and everybody, it was so many go to church and they're taught from so young that Lucifer is out to get them. And he's just not, he's absolutely not. You know what happened? The hurricane, you know what happened when I lost everything? You know what happened when I became a divorcee and when I had no home, people talked about me, people talked shit about me and I became kind of the joke of the town and I was ostracized by my family yet again <laughs> and um do you think any of them offered to help when I needed to leave my water soaked home or I needed to move my um business equipment or you know when I needed help or when I was homeless no not one and there was a period of time where I had called out to God and it was, it was burning hot because Hurricane Harvey hit in August and it was down here. It stays hot for a while. And I called out to God and I had asked and I had said, listen, it's like, if you were ever there, if you were ever there, show me something now. And nothing happened. Nothing happened for four days. And so I and then I made my peace with Lucifer and I shouted out to him and I said, I said, you know what? I said, I messed up. I, I messed up and I'm sorry. And I will follow you forever, forever, if you will just save me. Just please don't forsake me. Just save me. And uh, <clears throat> regardless of the path that it took to get here, regardless of the trolls, regardless of the bullshit I've been through, um, about two, three years later, I ended up buying a home with the 
soulmate and love of my life with the most healthy, happy home life, home, healthy, happy kids, career, <laughs> more abundance that I never, ever know what to do with. And all, all, all of my dreams being absolutely completed. Lucifer is the one that showed up. Lucifer is the one that answered. What I received after years of attempting to follow a Christian path and attempting to avoid judgment uh, and be accepted from family and people who didn't accept me ever in the first place, I got nothing. Everything was blown away. And when I begged for help, I was absolutely unanswered. And people were like, oh, you should just, you know, they'll probably try to tell you the story of Lot and try to tell you all these other bullshit stories. False. When you are responsible for an entire population, when you are responsible for people's faith, when you are respons responsible for people's salvation, um, and they make an absolute effort, uh, you know, to come to you or to honor you, you damn sure better answer. And he never did. He never did. And just like he never does for so many people who go through absolute pain, torture, abuse, hell, <laughs> being ostracized, being made fun of, being left, being, you know, being abandoned, being poor, having nothing in return for all of those years of service and of devotion and of attempts to be closer to him, to him. But when you call to Lucifer, when you call to demons, they show up. If not physically, they will soon. <laughs> and because I, I guarantee you call Lucifer enough and you're going to meet him. I've experienced nothing from this side before and after my exodus from Christianity. Um, but absolute love warmth, comfort, abundance, joy, stability, and everything my heart ever desired. And not ever once was I asked to sell a soul, to hurt anybody, to harm anyone, to mislead anyone. In fact, he's always been extremely, extremely, um, <laughs> I've been always extremely obligated to speak on behalf of him with absolute honesty and transparency. And I have lost friends. I have lost that side of my family for good. <laughs> and I've lost, you know, so much um, by following my true path, by following my true nature. Uh, when you follow what is true to you and what is real to you and what you believe in, abundance and what you know wealth and love and happiness will come it is when you do not follow that that everything starts to fall apart and gets really messed up you can feel it in your soul when you are not on the path that you belong on ever since uh going back to magic and going back to lucifer i have felt a hundred and thousand percent at peace and in love with my life in love with him and in love with everything that this path has has brought to me I have never had a healthier more steady more stable um, more loving life than I do now and what did I sacrifice I sacrificed one half of my family who are absolute fucking assholes that's it Aside from my mother, she's seen enough, she knows enough to know um, the power and the abilities of that side. So, you know, we maintain a good relationship, we're fine, uh, we're good. But anything else I've lost, fuck it. it. It was absolutely worth it to have the life that I have now. Um, 
my my children, you know, sleep at night in a home that can never be taken away from them. Uh, they have a home life and two parents that, are, you know, or, well, you know, uh, they have a home life and two parents uh, that absolutely adore them. They also have, you know, Georgie who, you know, helps take care of them and that's, you know, that's my sister. Um, so they have everything. I, they have everything they ever wanted. They um, have seen the world. They've enjoyed life. They've, I've given them everything I never had uh, growing up. And, um, and I'm so proud of, I'm so proud of what I've accomplished in such a short time. I'm so proud of following this path. I'm so proud of all the people who have joined this path as well. Um, if you've been hurt by the church or you've been hurt by people who tell try to tell you how to live, I want you to tell them to go fuck themselves. It's really important because I wasted several years of my life trying to fit into something that I, I never belonged in in the first place. And what are you, you know, what are you not living your truth for? For somebody's low, you know, low shitty opinion? What, what are you trying to gain acceptance for? Don't make my mistake. Live your truth. Live your life. Seek Lucifer. You know if you belong on this path or not. It resonates with you. So many people are curious and excited by this path and they are just scared of the backlash fuck the backlash when I decided fuck them you know when I decided to get rid uh to not worry about the judgment that would come when I decided to speak my truth and be public with it is when the abundance came it's when everything poured in at once it's when everything started working really fucking well and again a Luciferian does not believe at all that you and that's lucifer's promise to luciferians is that you will not be burning on the other side you'll not be hurt on the other side if you come to a demon if you come to lucifer if you come to you know any of them in total respect and honor they will protect you they protect you in this life and the next um <clears throat> i just i i really i really advise you to live your truth because, you know, people are always going to try to tell you how to live. They're always going to try to tell you what to do. And they're always going to have an opinion about the decisions you make. But I implore you to live your truth. Live in your own mind and live honestly. Even though it is scary. And the solitary path of living your own truth is scary. But I swear it is worth it. Because, you know, let me tell you something. You know, live your own truth, live your own path. It is absolutely worth it. It might be scary at first, but do not apologize for who you are. Do not apologize for what you believe in because these people don't know what they believe in either. They, they are just regurgitating shit that they heard from their parents. They don't know what they're doing. And I guarantee you that while they are sitting back judging you, they are watching you living in your boldness and living your best life and they are curious and they will follow suit as well eventually at least some of them will um you you have no idea the ability you have to influence others you have no idea how many people might be watching you and seeing you as a role model i absolutely implore you to go out and influence and live your truth regardless of the religion that you belong to regardless of what you believe in Go live your truth. Do not just regurgitate bullshit that you were forced fed as a young child. And do not do it just to fit in. Do not um, go against what comes naturally to you just to fit in with others. People will always try to force their opinion on you and try to force Christianity on you. If you are interested at all, I implore you to go grab the Introduction to Demonic Magic. And just read it. It will make so much sense. And when you start to get on this path and you start to see how magic works and you start to see how Lucifer really works, you might be upset. You might be upset to find out the truth of these stories. You might be upset to find out that you were lied to the whole time uh, in Christianity. You might be very upset to hear 
uh, the the back end and the and and what really happened. Um, you might be upset to find out how much time you wasted. I know I I know I was, and um, I just I don't want you to make the same mistake I did. I don't want you to waste your time trying to fit in to um, people's standards who don't really matter in the first place, who will never really accept you in the first place, who will talk about you the second you leave their table, and who are so caught up in being um, Christian and righteous that they will make your life hell if you don't fit in their little tiny box of what they think that being righteous means. A Luciferian, any Luciferian from my group, any one of my students are more moral and more loving and more accepting than anyone I have ever met in Christianity, preachers included. And that is saying a lot and is really sad because Luciferians are given this bad rap and a lot of people think that they're evil and that they're awful and that Lucifer is awful and evil and what's the worst for them. And it's just not fucking true. You have been lied to the whole time in church and there is, you do have the ability to live in abundance and live in happiness and live in love and to have everything you ever wanted without fear of burning in some lake of fire without fear of some narcissistic piece of shit god you have you have every ability to live the most amazing life that you never thought possible if you just open your mind and follow lucifer i hope all of you have learned something today i hope you don't make the same mistake i did and uh, when you hear about trolls saying oh she has a christian mom i hope that you now have the backstory and understand what that's about. I have no questions about who I am or who I follow. I have explored other paths. I have learned about other paths. I know the Bible backwards and forwards, and I know that it is bullshit. And I implore you to open your mind and to follow Lucifer. Anyway, I love you guys, and I'll see you around.